Okay. I'm going to jump right in here because uh, part two ended up being uh, too long. Oh. Um, <clears throat> so, the tavern owner, the, uh, the, uh, there's a dialogue between the tavern owner and Stan. When Stan's waiting for 7.30 to come around so we can go up and meet Bunny. <laughs> kind of asking him, you know, what, is it, what time is it? 7.30, 7.28. What time is it now? Uh, same, uh, 7.28. <laughs> but, you know, uh, so the, the uh, tavern owner obviously is on to Stanley is getting ready to go meet a girl up in one of the, one of the rooms of his inn. <laughs> I had to fight temptation me whole life. <laughs> it says, well, I'm just learning about it and you're making me late. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I found it funny because he was like, just think, don't think just because I took a, a vow of celibacy that I'm not tempted <laughs> by the firm flesh. <laughs> He's going on. <laughs> After uh, Stan runs up the, to meet uh, Bunny, he like, um, firm flesh, dangerous words, away with you. <laughs> It's almost as if he's, he can't deal with the fact that the words are having a physio physiological effect on his body. <laughs> so, after her uh, dealings with Brood, the earthly uh, counterpart of Stanley H. Tweedle, uh, Stan goes and knocks on the door at the designated time, 7.30, and Bunny, go, Bunny, Bunny opens the door. He's like, hi, Bunny. He's like, <laughs> bad man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's about this time the people that uh, Brood uh, gave the anonymous phone call to meet <laughs> there in the hallway at 7.30. <laughs> They're, uh, Stand to get his arse <laughs> kicking <laughs> are uh, there. Uh, Brood uh, is uh, in the tavern, uh, you know, meeting uh, Zev. <laughs> uh, met Zev, and uh, after some uh, persuading that he needs to, her, her to take him up to the Lex so he can tell her something important. <laughs> like in her drunken state, okay, if it's that important. <laughs> so they're on their way to. Uh, her her eyes, of course, rolling up in her head. What the heck's going on? A little bit, but I guess it's her drunken state, that, <laughs> or for plot purposes, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> but uh, they're on their way up to the Lex there, where uh, uh, Bro Brood brings his keyboard, or uh, as when Zev inquires, "What's that <laughs> keyboard?" He's like, "Oh, that's uh, that's my keyboard." Oh, oh wait, no, uh, it's it's a music thingy that I found. <laughs> And I wrote you a song, <laughs> and then he plays the same damn tune, <laughs> What Child Is This?, only uh, instead of saying, just happy hour, oh happy, it's, oh Zev, oh Zev, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously thinking that uh, this is going <laughs> to win him access <laughs> to her. <laughs> oh God, so they're on the Lex there, and um during an alteration between the character Brood, Earthly Stan, and Zeb, she uh, says, okay, you're acting weird, and, and uh, eventually you know, pushes him aside, especially when he starts talking about that whole cradle in my rock thing. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> so she pushes him out of the way. He uh, loses his balance. The robot head, 790... <laughs> intervenes and knocks him off the plant and he, off the uh, uh, bridge of the, the ship, the Lex, and boop, he falls to his death. <laughs> Which, of course, Zev is all, oh my God, Stanley just died, but where did the key go? Uh, Brood died, but he didn't have the key because he's not the real Stanley H. Sweetle. <laughs> At one point in the tavern, or, uh, Zev does go back down to the tavern now to get Kai and find out what's going on. Um, at one point in the tavern, she does that cluster lizard screech thing of hers. But I guess all the patrons are too drunk to notice. <laughs> Oh, jeez, going on five minutes already. Okay, <clears throat> this is why I wanted to make part three and... Uh, Get this done because I want to go on to the next episode called a Walpurgis Night. 
I uh, apparently I, I I didn't watch any of the episode yet. Um, uh, apparently, it's a Christian traditional celebration thing, especially associated with me medieval German folklore. Or the evening uh, preceding the festive day of St. Walpurgis, when the witches congregate, especially on the Brocken, Brocken which is a uh, mountain in central Germany, or some sources said northern Germany. So it's like, when you're looking for information online, it's, it's like hit or miss, you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, <clears throat> um, this whole, this, uh, thing is important to German folklore, which I found interesting because uh, it's German and Canadian artists that work in the show, in unison, on the show Lex, so. I have not started watching the episode yet, uh, at all yet, uh, except for 10 years ago when I binge-watched the whole series. The problem with binge-watching any show is the brain can't really truly absorb the content you're watching. Not long, not long term, anyways. So, so another reason why I've come to the conclusion that a series of videos on the subject is better than longer ones. <sighs> so, uh, as I said in part two, uh, the, it, it would make sense to me that the writers would want to satisfy the audience's uh, desire to see uh, Stanley H. Tweedle take a beating. <laughs> but I do find it humorous when Kai comes to Stan's rescue... Uh, with his little wrist thingy, when the uh, beating he's taken is about to go from punches and slaps to a hammer, <laughs> which is going to result in, uh, if not killing, then definitely doing some permanent damage to Stanley H. Tweedle. He does his little magic little wrist thingy, <laughs> grabs the hammer, and and the guy, the guy there, the, the leader of the guys that uh, the, are gunning for this uh, brood character, Says, who are you? I am Kai. Ah, well, wait your turn. <laughs> I, I find it funny that he assumes Kai is just another, somebody that this brood guy ripped off one way or the other. <laughs> but no, he uh, met with his demise uh, back on the Lex with, uh, with uh, Zev. And Zev, at this point, is back in the tavern and comes down and sees that Stanley is you know, got his face pounded in, but he's alive, and she's uh, relieved to see that, because in her eyes, he's the real Stanley. <laughs> but, uh, so that uh, brings me to Bunny, who is back home at, in D.C. with the president and her husband. It was horrible. I cradle, I had to cradle his rock. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but I only did it because I love you. And she's trying her eyes out and everything. <laughs> Bunny is all hot for the president, President Reggie, because he's do because he he does what a good husband is supposed to do when his wife has been violated. See that those responsible pay. Actually, a better husband <laughs> sees, to it, sees to it his wife is not violated in the first place. But uh, in this story <laughs> telling, uh, in this story telling, it's a bit too late for that. <laughs> Mainly because of the president's loyalty to Prince. <laughs> so he goes and gets his football phone. <laughs> I think he uses to. Send the nukes. <laughs> it says, people, don't treat the president's bunny with the proper respect. They pay. <laughs> and she just says, you're the best president in the world. <laughs> and she <laughs> sets the nuke um, uh, for uh, nukes Newfoundland for making his bunny cradle that guy's rock. And then backstabbing and going back on his word and putting him in a bad place with Prince. <laughs> but again, as I stated in part two, although innocent, I like how Bunny seems to be on guard whenever Prince is around. <laughs> but, uh, um, but, but, but because of, uh, you know, uh, defending her honor, of course, she's all, you know, hot for President Reggie now. <laughs> she says... I want to cradle your rock right now. <laughs> <laughs> President Reggie's like, you do? 
<laughs> like, well, cradle away. <laughs> I said, <laughs> cradle away. <laughs> That's how it would sound if it was Ronnie. <laughs> Why I did that? Check out my very, 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 very first video three years, four years ago on this channel. I'm up to like almost a thousand videos. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> so, um, Prince comes in and interrupts all that, of course. Up to mischief, he says to the President Reggie. Of course, my prince, just like you like. <laughs> yes, but there are more uh, pressing matters. Surely you haven't forgotten about the Antarctic uh, summit. Uh, uh, yes, I had, my prince. <laughs> yes, that is why I am in charge. <laughs> I improvise a little bit, but that is... Basically, the dialogue <laughs> between them towards the end. Also, I think there's something fitting about newfound land being annihilated while the band at the tavern continues to play the Brunin G fighting song, Into the Night, or as it turns out, Into Oblivion. So, neither of the uh, Lex crew... Uh, was affected by Newfoundland being nuked. <laughs> they were in a moth and on their way to Transylvania. So basically that's how the episode ends with uh, Prince, the President, uh, President Reggie and Bunny having an Antarctica engagement and Stan, Zev and Kai having a destiny meeting in Transylvania. <laughs> now in real life um Something probably changed. Something changed in 2011. I did a little research, but um, so it may not be anymore. But Romania had a station for research and exploration in an, in Antarctica in the late 90s, uh, 1990s, when this show was originally on. Uh, Transylvania is in the central part of Romania. <laughs> As a result of World War One and Two, Romania and Transylvania are under the same governing rules via a treaty that was signed in 1920. I attempted to have, in, in, in an attempt to have some insight as to where the writers, Paul Donovan, Lex uh, Gigerzoff, Gigerzoff, uh of this show, Lex, are going, I thought it'd be wise to enlighten myself with a bit of real-world history. After all, I can be a dumb American, <laughs> if I wanted to be. <laughs> so, <clears throat> in tribute to the fictional humans that uh, perished on Newfoundland, within the confines of the storytelling of the show Lex, here's a little, my own little string rendition, rendition of the uh, Brunin G fighting song. Romania or Transylvania <laughs> now hopefully unless the next episode called uh, Wall Purchase Night involves another plotline detour <laughs> ay 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 Mike Berlack thank you for your time hopefully my videos post this time the first time around last time I had to re-upload them. <laughs> <laughs>